the title of the seminar as you have already given it is uh, uh, media through the lenses of sociology and as a teacher you know we are all trained to go into the variables in the title so i was trying to look the dictionary what exactly do you mean by media and i did not find the term media in sociology dictionary i tried to look the dictionary uh, you know many dictionaries of course i can talk i can definitely tell you about duncan mitchell's uh, dictionary edited by duncan mitchell i did not find even mass communication or communication there so you can very well understand that how new this arena is uh, yeah uh, in uh, other dictionaries like jerry and jerry collins dictionary uh, media term does not exist and even oxford dictionary media term does not exist it is basically mass communication in media or sociology of mass communication that is the term which exists so i think uh, what i'll do is that i will begin uh, by reflecting upon this topic according to my vantage point and make it as mass communication and in the society i think that will be a little bit uh, you know digression from the topic which you have given though i am a good student and i take homeworks very seriously and i always uh, do that homework but i was thinking i tried but i could not actually get into so uh you know uh, if you if you go by this uh, term uh, and if you go by uh, dictionary itself uh, what does this actually topic can be made you know and that is what i'm trying to argue that mass media uh, and communication so according to dictionary meaning if i take dictionary meaning then mass media of communication can be defined as the techniques and institution techniques and institution through which centralized providers broadcast or distribute information and other form of symbolic communication to large heterogeneous and geographically dispersed audience so you have to see that how many variables start emerging and that's what the beauty of sociology is that sociology takes us towards society and that's where i think uh, uh, you have really uh, um, titled the talk so uh, media through the sociology lens sociology lenses of the sociology so i think you know uh, so if if you have to understand media so you can understand media and along with that you have to also understand sociology so i think uh, in a very simplistic term uh, when we talk about sociology uh you can take number of definitions but uh, i have taken definition from max weber and i i feel that you know uh his definition is the most standardized definition and i think most of you don't think that definitions are rudimentary they are bad and they actually you know they do nothing but please take definitions seriously i have been telling my students uh at ma level at mphil level at phd level that please take definitions seriously don't start concocting your own definitions i i really feel sometimes when people start giving their own <laughs> definitions i don't feel like you know uh, taking those definitions because uh, you know definitions give you a vantage point they give you contours they give you the exact introduction which you don't need to take and therefore i argue that when i ask my students at mphil and phd level please tell me weber's definition of sociology so there was as i it is uh, and i study of social action now 
this is this is you cannot speak the same language in science if i ask you newton's law of motion then you will speak the exact language but in sociology you can take liberty but that should not be done i think why because we are also doing social science it's part of science is not actually you know a, a poetry a poem it is exactness and science is nothing but a body of knowledge which is more organized and calculated this is soberg and net definition a science is a body of knowledge which is more organized and calculated and that's where sociology should also be there so weber says sociology is a science of interpretative understanding of social action now therefore when you are talking about media through sociology uh, sociological lenses then three very important components have to be kept in mind when you are talking and these three components are the study of mass media message what is the mass media message now there are different methods to understand that message but one of the most important sociological message uh, method to understand message is content analysis now content analysis is a method to understand whatever is being produced in newspapers and in television or even in radio or in cinema and now on social media and also you know other types of media and why i try to show that actually because you have to understand the enormity of the social media you cannot actually wish away i will come to that little bit later so first and the foremost important sociological vantage point is content analysis of the production of knowledge or production of content in the media that is one the second aspect is to understand how that particular message is produced that means for that you have to go and study the institution the institution in which they are being produced and the personnels which are involved in production of that information and the third this actually is the audience who is the audience so these three are three very important aspects in which actually we have to begin our understanding but you know uh, uh if if you see that there are others also who have given three other perspectives which have guided the study of uh, 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 of media through sociological perspective and it is here sociology combines itself with others and that is social psychology social psychology has focused on the process of effects of mass communication what are the effects of mass communication so we can very well uh, you know understand uh, example of advertising you know i've seen uh, the dancing chocolate and you know the kids they want that i want to have dancing chocolates but when they go and buy that chocolate it doesn't dance but on television it dances but that is nothing but as as our merton says that there are manifest function and there are latent function so manifest function is the you know attraction and kids get extracted but latent function is how they can extract maximum money so they get fooled about it so i think the social psychological perspective is very important the second focus on mass communication is the institution and organization as i have already told you about the broad base the context and if you can take here sociology of knowledge and 
you know reality is produced in the social context or reality is socially constructed that is what peter berger and lockman would say so how this news is produced who are actually the personal which are the organization and third the structural perspective comes into existence which focuses upon the messages images and meanings conveyed by the mass media now the power of mass media has to be understood that how it reconstruct the past in the present it has the power to reconstruct the past in the present for example take example of 9 by 11 at every anniversary we see that how twin towers start falling on the television now there is there is one opening there is one window which will show the twin towers are you know falling and there is another window which would say which will see the the person who was responsible for that who is was held responsible for that i'm not naming so how the two images have an impact on you and they can recreate the past in the present and that's the power that sets the agenda now you cannot actually you cannot forget the image so easily so you have to keep in mind that these impacts are not so so easily forgotten now what is the what is the enormity i want to just give you few data which are which are available on google you can download but to bring the perspective because sociology does not study a bubble it does not study a phenomena which is of one time phenomena it studies continuous happenings and there is a trend so to capture the trend we need to have numbers now i want to first give you number of television channels in india according to 2080 you know media census it says that there are 850 tv channels in india in all the good in all the languages 22 languages as we have given so so most of the languages they have and 850 channels now these channels are not very important the important is that we have 197 million households which have television 197 millions and you know household count is five members per household that means if you multiply 197 then you will get 985 million viewers of television only now you can understand that how much impact it makes so it should not be taken the virtual life should not be taken you know very very uh slantly or very casually you have to really think of that now having said you with this now let's come to the social media i think that is uh, and its function because that has become again very important and i want to give you again the numbers of the social media but let us actually define what do i mean by social media i mean by social media as a platform social media refers to platform used on both mobile devices as well as home computers so they are platforms i think very important thing to understand that they are not basically you know uh, that you cannot have access you can be also contributing that platform in te in television or in newspaper in radio the accessibility was problem but here 
the social media accessibility is not that problematic. It is problematic, definitely, but not that. So social media is basically nothing but a platform used on both the mobile devices as well as home computers that allow users to interact with fellow beings with the help of use of words, images, sounds, and videos. And you all know that social media includes Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and so on and so forth. Now, what is the what is the number which we are talking about? I am really fond of talking numbers because we keep on comparing us with London or we keep on comparing with America and how many America you can actually, you know, put it. Now, as far as the WhatsApps are concerned, there are 340 million users of WhatsApp. 340 million users. And that's where it becomes the biggest market in the world. And you will not believe 100 billion messages are actually sent by WhatsApp. 100 billion. I do not know how many zeros can you put. But you see the numbers, enormity of numbers. As far as Twitters are concerned, it is way behind. It is only 22.10 million people, those who use Twitter in India. But Facebook have the similar number as WhatsApp. 340 million Facebook users in country. And that's why it is leading. As far as Instagram is concerned, it is only 180 million people which have access with the photo. And even on YouTube, we have 225 million uh, people who use YouTubes. So if you see that, definitely there are, you know, interlinkages. There will be people who will be using similar, you know, uh, same people will be using different. But I'm trying to argue that you can take the numbers and that's why social media becomes very, very important. And how it can be manipulated, how the political masters can definitely use. And therefore, communication and public relations have really grown drastically throughout. So communication and public relations. So this social media has an impact on communication and as well as public relations. I know how many friendships are done on YouTube and how many can be done on Facebook and Twitters and how many breakups take place on Facebook. That study has yet to be done. So you can definitely. Look. But there are multiple social networking sites that have ability to visualize and share one's personal social life. Even though the first social networking sites were created several years ago, the rise of both MySpace and Facebook over uh, the, you know, over and, you know, above, uh, you can say they have created a lot of fervor in the social life. I'm not going into that detail. I think you're all aware. I think you must be more savvy to uh, different. I'm not on WhatsApp, so I cannot tell you. Now, uh, having given you media, having given you social media, I treat cinema also as mass communication, as a medium of representation. And I think we should keep in mind because, you know, in India, if you go a, by a evolutionary and historical process, you will have to see that the history of uh, Cinema in India goes actually some uh, a, a from 1896, I think. If you take uh, 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 Lumars, actually they produced silent movies without any words. Those were the movies. And the way it started, we produced from nine, 1896 to 1970s. We had superstar, a culture of superstar. And it was no way to say that actually how we produced India's first superstar. Who was he? Rajesh Khanna. 
Rajesh Khanna, who gave 74 good Golden Jubilee movies at a stretch, along with 22 Silver Jubilees. And you know how he used to call the shots. If you see, if you have not seen, please go and watch today. You will find Sujit Kumar either as a villain or as a character artist in his film. That was the dictation which Rajesh Khanna used to see. But he was, of course, considered as a, uh, as a superstar. And later on, the second superstar which we had was in Amitabh Bachchan. Angry young man. And how angry young man, the Sulalite, represented the anger of 70s. And it is said that our teacher, Professor uh, Vijit Pathak, used to say that, oh, Amitabh Bachchan used to have you know, angry young man with a chocolatey face. That is the real combination. He had a chocolatey face and that comes in Silsila, if you see Dekha Ek Khwab Tu. And how he starts living the aspirations of the people on the movies. The anger of 70s was that we had woken from the slumber of our independence. We had given ourselves a constitution and that constitution was actually being implemented. But there was a lot of poverty. There was a lot of discrimination. And, you know, the Congress of that time started having poverty alleviation program, 20-point program. But there was nobody to let the anger of the people. And therefore, Amitabh Bachchan became representative of that powerful persona on the and you have seen uh, starting from Danzir, Divar, or uh, you know, uh, Dawn, you will see that all those things start emerging. But that that image has not dwindled away, and 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 he still he captures the audience not on the big screen but the little screen with Kon Banega Karor Pati. Why he is so much famous? So that's what I was trying the power of imagery doesn't die. The history comes to the fore and people from 7 to 70, remember Amitabh Bachchan, not from actually Mr. Natwarlal to actually the uh, other films which he has given. Now, the masculinity of watching the film was also one of the lived experience of the people of 80s and 90s. If you have not Watch the film first day, first show after taking the ticket from the window. I don't know how you have taken, but you have to stand hours together in the window. And you wanted to watch the film first day, first show by taking the film. So this lived experience of the people that watching Amitabh Bachchan's film first day, first show was also a reporter of masculinity that I have watched that angry young man first day first show and the the people used to throw coins those who were sitting actually in the first seat of course they were richer on that day but they were actually having it so this impact the impact of Amitabh Bachchan's hairstyle or uh, the, uh, the the shirt style of uh, or collar style of Rajas Khanna was differently impact and the way uh, you know i don't want to go into that if you have seen goody a film and in that film you know uh, somebody comes and says that tells dharmender oh this girl is you know uh, very crazy about you dharmender says that oh i have heard that people are crazy about rajas khanna how come she's crazy for me so that craziness has been captured even by celluloid so i'm not actually just trying to argue but definitely you have to see that mass communication or indian cinema as important uh, as very important aspect of uh, impact on the uh, lifestyle consumption as well as the uh, fashion now coming to the uh, mass communication and the process of globalization i think that is also a very important era in which we are. And the importance of 
communication assumes uh, in this era of uh, uh, globalization is that there is a process of information revolution. And information revolution and globalization go hand in hand. And what is this information revolution? By click of a button, you are sitting in JNU and you have reached to Jahanabad or Johannesburg or actually any part of the world. So there is a homogenization of the world and also reduction of time and space just because of information revolution. And that is click of the, of course, gadgets are there. But what is the impact? And this homogenization is more in material culture. Not because culture has two components. One is material culture and non-material culture. Material culture I'm talking about, if you take material culture, for instance, most of the brands of the world, you take four food item, McDonald's, Domino's, uh, Pizza Hut, Subway, Kentucky, and whatnot. I may be, you know, giving. And, and within that, you can have drinks, Coca-Cola, Fanta, Pepsi, Sprite, Topicana, Nescafe, and even Costa Rica has come actually. Then you go to uh, clothes, Nike, Adidas, uh, Puma, Levi's, Woodland, and then electronic good brands like Apple, uh, like Nokia, Samsung, LG, Philips. You take car, whether it is Honda, Suzuki, Lexus. You take foreign motorcycles or you take actually, you know, uh, uh, cable TV, satellite TV. Or you can take actually any part of the things. These are all there. Even... If you take American films or European, Russian, all channels are available on your cable TV. TV channels have also translated themselves into the language which is desired. It's not that they are fond of languages of India. It is basically that gives them accessibility. So Sony has Hindi, Star has Hindi, and now they have different languages mtv hindi pop have you heard hindi pop the the music is pop the word is hindi or kilispo pop all these have tried to create what our teacher professor uman talks about hybridization the process of hybridization one part is western and another part you have impetuated and you have actually merged together. So McDonald burger is usually available in beef and ham. So you have taken out beef and ham and you have put potato tiki and you have made vegetable burger. Or MTV is usually in English. So you have to remove English and you have bought Punjabi pop or Hindi pop and you are actually enjoying that. Similarly, you take your kurta habits, you have kurta, but you have Levi's jeans on kurta. Hmm? And, you know, uh, you can also look into that uh, how these articles or how these cultures, especially material cultures, have been hybridized and produced. So the, on the one hand, there is a process of homogenization in the global world because of information revolution. But there is a process of hybridization also because the local cultures do not uh, want to die as their own and they cannot be passive recipient. They have also their existence. So the fear that, oh, the Western culture will come and Indian culture will be wiped out is a misnomer and that's where i bring in the concept of uh, western epistemic syndrome the western epistemic syndrome is observing the reality in binaries 
I think very important concept. Please look into because then you will also bring in intersectionality. So things are should not be things should not be observed in binaries, rich and poor, old and young, rural and urban, tradition and modern. This is nothing but Westernic West where uh, Westernic actually epistemic syndrome that people they want to only observe Westerners want to observe in binaries and they also have this displacement syndrome displacement syndrome what modern will come tradition will be wiped out but that is not the case displacement syndrome is basically a misnomer there are different permutation and combination are produced and that's why we as sociologists and our actually you know elders have written text look like modernization of indian tradition professor archana prasad will tell you that how she has to teach modernity of tradition whether it is continuum or it is dichotomy so what comes as modern is tradition of the westerns what comes to us as modern is the tradition of the western so how can there be a dichotomy there is always a continuum there is always a, a creation there are different permutation and combination which are produced for example if you have gone through weber Weber says that rationality will come. But that does not mean irrationality will go away. Rationality will come, but irrationality will be there. May not be necessarily rampantly. So I think it is very important to understand that this displacement syndrome and these binaries are Western epistemic actually uh, syndromes that have to be tackled and this can be tackled very easily if you take an evolutionary perspective a evolutionary historical perspective because we have seen that how actually in india modern came but it could not wipe out the tradition only two percent of india speaks english they have ruled for 150 years. But what has happened? Whether they could wipe out the local languages? No. So please don't be afraid. You know, our youngsters are quite afraid. Oh, Westerns are coming. And that's why the, you know, other forces, rightist forces will keep on telling you, oh, this will be wiped out. It's not going to happen. Our culture, our society, our understanding has been, our traditions, our institutions, are age old they always recreate and there is no pristine and pure form of culture no culture is pristine and pure it's always give and take so please look into that how this onslaught of the western uh, culture has taken place because of mass communication in the era of globalization now the only thing which i just want to i still have time i think huh? We started at 2.30 only. So I do, I have time. So now actually you see that how this, uh, you know, you have to also take a little bit of, uh, I, I, I come to, I come to the uh, technological part of it. But before that, I also want, when you have talked about sociology, I think it's very important to understand that why actually the moving images have had impact on us moving images or whether it has been movie or whether it is actually uh, any tv serial or whether it is television why they have more impact on us it's not that it is out of blue i think we have to go into our uh, history and tradition again and i always try to analyze from sociological perspective 
through history and evolutionary perspective. Now, we always had our, you know, uh, uh, stories in our society. No society, no society is bereft of tales. They all have tales, actually. And we had a very long tradition of allegory. Allegory, if you have, if you still see allegory, Panchatantra. Panchatantra has the, you know, biggest, uh, the, the ancient, most ancient form of it. And it is actually, uh, it's not that it is not present in 19th century. And it was not present in 14th century. If you have anyhow come to understand elite theory by Pareto or Mosca, elite theory. Now, elite theory of Pareto talks about loin and foxes. Loin and foxes. And if you really can stretch your imagination of 14th century, I go to Mukaddama. I go to Mukaddama and Mukaddama by Ibn Khaldun has given a theory of elites, of robes and elites of swords. And he was one of the, and, and Pitrim Sorokin says that if anyone could be considered as father of sociology, Ibn Khaldun should be one of them. Such was his profound territories, which was later on translated by a number of people. Ibn Khaldun. So what I try to argue that, you know, 6th and 7th century allegory of Panchatantra with loin and fox story goes and travels to 14th century Mukaddama with elites and robes and swords and goes to 19th century US and comes back to us as elite theory and we accept it without any question. The point I'm trying to argue is that stories have a long history in Indian society. And we are all actually, I don't know, because now the family structure has changed. We all have grown by listening stories with our grandmothers. And especially we remember grandmothers because of our their stories or their contribution. Their even their their stories were so so actually enlightening sometimes that they also taught us lessons. Now this story were not only not only in words they were also pictorial representation of stories and you can have art forms if you if you if you take actually uh mythological is uh, art form they are actually or tribal art form they are all representing the stories are represented in pictorial forms now when these stories which were wordly which were in words which become pictorial and when they became live, they were readily accepted by us. And therefore, you have to also understand the sociology of cinema that how Indian mythology, Indian mythology gels with contemporary cinema. And in contemporary cinema, most of the time, we have seen a hero. One. There will be one hero who will come and take away all our miseries, pain and agony. And he will actually, you know, settle down everything. Now, this gels with, you know, uh, 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 if, if, if you want to take, if you're fond of mythology, you can take it from uh, Gita. Yada yadahi dharmasya glanir bhavati. And there will be one who will come and paratraya sadhunam vinashaya chaduskritam. Dharm sansta apnarthaya sambhavavi yuge yuge. There will be one who will take away all your pain and agony. There is no collectivity involved actually. There is no that actually people will unite together and they will fight. 
this is not the construction or you take actually even guru the way guru have been celebrated the way actually institution of guru has been celebrated but it has never been questioned i think that also gels with our cinematic representation of individual who will take away and who can forget nasiruddin sa film sir please watch actually sir is you know very very uh, <laughs> uh, comes and actually takes away all the pain and agony so what i am trying to argue here is that you know our traditions our history do not go away and they gel with the present construction and that's why i actually take sociology of knowledge perspective which talks about reality is socially constructed we had film on ism whether it is basically uh, feudalism now but we we have on feudalism we have on prostitution we have films actually on so many other topics and even if you go by but what has been most exploited theme that has been mythology whether starting from because there was not r and d there is no r and d in 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 neither in mass communication of a, a small screen you see that how the whole whole family is celebrated how joint family is being celebrated and then we have films which are also again going back to uh, mythologies and now we have films on military the military triumphs actually now this is nothing but construction which is related to time and context as durkheim would say so if you really want to understand sociology of uh, mass communication or media then i think you have to take three very important steps as as has been told by number of people one you have to talk about the content how content is created how and who are the people who are creating then actually you have to talk about institution who are the actually har bringers or who are the owners the corporates you know the whole world media uh, if you take whole world media today who holds the uh, who holds the uh, you know three or four people hold the whole media houses in the world and that's what actually is starting from uh, uh, who are actually i i think i lost that data because i thought that it's important in india reliance owns 84 channels only one person so you can understand that we are talking about expression we are talking about democratization are we falling prey to monopolization and that is why i think we have to always we have to take whatever media reproduces or produces i think we have to bring in the context of bordeu whether it is not reproduction of hegemony whether it is patriarchal or whether it is uh, caste or whether it is religious i think we have to be very careful to take whatever is given to us otherwise you know we will uh, we will think rajdeep sir desai or barkadat or ornab goswami are the biggest sociologist and whatever they have given to us we have to think of that no i think researches start from observation but what you get you have to go in depth and and then analyze so you can take at face value to start with as weber would say value neutrality but value freeness that will only come when you go inside and analyze it so please look into these aspects and then and then only you can have an objective information and that's what i think mass media or media through sociology should be giving you an objective information 
so that you can definitely make your society better. Thank you.